Hi, Amant. Hey, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. But yeah, so good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, man. And uh, thank you so much for your time. So uh, I'm looking forward to a great learning from you. And uh, I've always been inspired by seeing your pictures. And it's a great opportunity for all of us to to learn a little bit from you. Okay, so first, uh, we'll wait for a couple of minutes for uh, you know for some people to join, and then uh, maybe I will uh, I ask you start asking you some questions. Sure, man. Okay. Welcome. So we will quickly. Go through your pictures. Wow. <laughs> so, what is your most uh, fam uh, for most favorite place for taking pictures, Himan? See, any place is good. Like you know, where you find the animals, birds, or anything. In nature, you go anywhere; it's beautiful. Right. I think um, what you say is very, I mean, you are saying true to yourself because uh, I know you have been shooting so much in your backyard and you have got oh, some yeah. amazing pictures, which nobody I, else has got. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't find like, you know, going out and all these national parks and so many places like you should have mm -hmm. time, first of all, and then lots of money you have to spend on that. Right, I, right, I try right, to right. explore my nearby area, then all yeah, I go there and I just find whatever I can find. And, Mm -hmm. And you will, you know, right. from one small insect to birds, and there are so many mammal, mammals you can find. Right. And you can click them, right. and make your photographs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. What a beauty. Beautiful. Wow. So I'm so excited to talk about this picture. So <laughs> I put this picture <laughs> as a banner, and uh, people were saying, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very apt for this time. <laughs> it has been shared in thousands of time in, I mean, in, it's everywhere yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and few people don't believe like, you know, it's my photograph. They said, no, no, it's not your photograph. Someone else <laughs> clicked it. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In fact, there was one picture of yours, uh, a friend from England, he sent it to us and okay. we say, hey, this is a picture of, uh, I mean, he's a close, close friend of uh, ours. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, so it was like that. You're everywhere. <laughs> mm, a few photos are for, like you know unique and it is definitely everywhere yeah but not <laughs> all of them <laughs> all right all right uh, himant we'll get started with the question and answers so uh, we have uh, quite a few people uh, with us now so, all right sure. thank you yeah i welcome once uh, again uh, for joining uh, with us and i hope we'll have a great learning I had always inspired by uh, your pictures all the time and uh, i don't know how many of you uh, viewers who are watching me who have read about uh, what I wrote, posted in my Facebook. I'll tell you the story on, uh, I always used to wonder uh, how de how does Heman get these uh, amazing pictures? Nobody gets them. How does he get them? And uh, once I was with my friend Rajesh and we were just watching the, the flamingos from quite far and then we saw one uh, gentleman. No, I can't say gentleman. He was looking <laughs> like more like a, a, a person with... Uh, all in mud and he was coming towards it and then we recognize he is our friend Heman. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So, and then we realize that is how he gets these pictures and uh, and even now he doesn't uh, use very high-end equipments and, and he has been taking amazing pictures. So, uh, he is an example I, I give to everybody. The kind of pictures that he takes with very modest equipment is, is just amazing. So, uh, so let us uh, start talking to him. Let me uh, shoot uh, my questions to him and understand what is the secret behind uh, the kind of pictures that he has got so far? So, Hemant, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. So, please tell us a little bit, bit about your life journey as a photographer. Okay, Saurabh. So, um, I'm basically an artist. I did my uh, graduation and post graduation in fine arts, specialized mm -hmm. in painting. I started my photography like somewhere in 1999 and 2000 with okay. film camera FM10. So mm, okay, on and yeah. off, like, you know, a few yeah. years I, I shot with that and then mm -hmm. seriously, I took this, I think, seven, eight year back, the birding and all. Okay. So uh, for me, like, uh, I, I left painting and all, then I started taking photography. So I, I enjoy going in the nature, you know, observing animal, birds, their behavior. There's so many things to learn. Like, you know, whenever you're going out in nature, you learn a lot. So it's not right, only you're right. taking a photograph, you're also learning and it's a kind of first hand experience with nature. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of joy I get through this and I, I really enjoy it. 
okay great so uh, then um, so that's how you started and then please tell us a little bit about what happened next then you were everywhere <laughs> <laughs> it's not i mean i think that time when i started uh, very less people are there like you know we our apps group was there and few more uh, serious photographers were there so i also started slowly and i started exploring different places going there because like again like with the job and all it's not easy to go and ex- go in outside right. and ex- take photos right. and all so it's better to explore your local area there are lots of things mm-hmm. if you know the habitat based on habitat you can find so many different species of any i mean so many species you'll find there you just need to go there explore it spend some time you know and click it yeah <laughs> and my fine arts background is definitely helping me out to get a better frame and curiosity okay. is again one more thing which can you know get you a good photograph like you know okay. that helps you to understand about animal and you know okay. and when you are spending more time you are learning about them okay. right and that's how you can get a different angles different photographs a, a unique frame basically okay so yeah. if i uh, say suppose you go for about a 2 hour session so how much on an average would you spend observing them and how much would you spend taking okay. pictures okay so initially in initial days like you know it's it was never about 2 hours or 3 hours about the whole day so okay. early morning when it is dark i'm out and i'm returning mm-hmm. home when it is night so wow. it is like that so nature is again very unpredictable you you never know what's going to happen next okay so for me it is not like you know daylight is good for mm-hmm. photography or night light is evening light is good the toilet and all so i don't believe in that funda because you cannot predict nature few of my mm-hmm. good photographs are in a harsh you know 12 o'clock 1 o'clock harsh light but again the moment okay. i got that is that was unique so yeah every time you go you have something unique in front of mm. you it is not like you know just to get a yellow light and you know the twilight mm-hmm. in your photograph so right. because i'm not shooting a portrait i'm not carrying a big 600 800 lens to just to shoot a mm-hmm. portrait everybody is doing that i don't and mm-hmm. i'm not in that like you know i want something more than portrait mm-hmm. so it's okay. it's it, i that's what i told you like i keep going and exploring the nature Mm. and that's how i get a lot of good shots i i believe i got good collection now yeah I, i yeah i remember uh, uh, you telling us so a lot of times you would not even go for lunch you would just stay back for the whole day and come back only till the time you can shoot right right so sometimes like just a samosa and tea i'm searching okay fine or i'll carry some some snacks in my you know camera bag just to you know to have something in between that's all otherwise morning leaving with some tea and evening i'm coming and i'm having like my dinner or wow. whatever yeah so it was like this wow that requires some kind of dedication wow yeah it's it's great. a kind of addiction once you are into it you you will love it mm-hmm. great yeah so uh, did you have any formal training in uh, photography uh, no no sir of no formal training and all so see But i you're a trained artist I am a trained artist. artist. Yes, I am an artist. Correct. So I think that is also so helping me out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, it, it's it's the camera is just a tool, right? It's just a tool. Right. It's, right. It's you behind it, right? You know that makes a Absolutely. whole difference. So how so, did you learn to control your tool? Because that's also something very important as a wildlife photo- photographer to capture the moments. So did you learn it yourself or through friends I, or I, how did you do it? I did it my own. In my college, we had three streams like uh, print making, uh, cam photography, and a computer. So I took okay. print making. For for print making, we, you need a, a printing press proper, so mm-hmm. that you, that I will not get anywhere out. So I knew camera. Okay. If I buy camera, I learn it. In computer, right. I can learn it anywhere, anywhere. So uh, learning cam photography, it's it's all about controlling light. That's, That's all. Right. So that I know how to control the light. based on my subject and my frame like you know what kind of frame i want based on that i can control my light so it's it's all great so uh, who are the photographers that have influenced you most and how okay so i mean now uh, a lots of photographers are there like you know it's not only about one photographer there are tons of photos i see basically 
those photos inspire me and okay. initially a uh, lots of photographers from our uh, atps and lots mm -hmm. of wildlife photographers we have in hyderabad mm -hmm. so right. they they inspire me because i can connect with them directly i can ask if i have any question right right, right. i can ask right. them about you know this species where, and about uh, all those things see where did you find these where did you shoot these so right. that gives right. you a kind of start kind of kick it's not about like you know there are lots of international photographers of course i know them but again right. i cannot interact with them directly right mm -hmm. so i try to explore in my <laughs> range whatever whoever is there i can directly deal with them and you know they are very very helpful we have right. uh, masood bhai is there ismail mm -hmm. is there and so mm -hmm. many friends so many good photographers right. are there and very down to earth right. absolutely right? so we Absolutely. keep sharing things and all and you know and together we we have went so many times in different places mm -hmm. to shoot right yeah right and again internet you have there are tons of different photographers they are doing so much of amazing work like uh, i really like uh, ripan biswas work and dhritman mukherjee and, uh, and and there are so many you you just just google it here you will get so many photographers right right yeah. right okay so uh, regarding your photography so how, how is your workflow like so suppose you are going to a place so how are you going to decide uh, to start immediately or uh, you just wait for some time observing and then uh, and then we'll talk about the processing part later yeah to so, sarab see uh, as i told you like you know i spend lots of time in the field like you know going early morning and till evening yeah. i'll be out mm. searching searching my subjects okay so i spend lots of time scanning the terrain mm -hmm. the area habitat based on the habitat you can spot different kinds of species so that is very important like you cannot just go straight away and start shooting mm -hmm. give some time to your subject you know and then approach them so it, mm -hmm. it's always good okay so okay. after after you come back from uh, the the place so how do you uh, go about it so suppose you have so uh, typically uh, when you come back after a day how many pictures would you have so earlier it was like 500 600 photos now it okay. is reduced to 100 200 photos so now okay. i i don't see it it's useless shooting like blindly if you, you mm -hmm. have a bus mode doesn't mean you have to keep shooting it right, right? you know the moment when the action mm -hmm. is going to happen just be ready for that so all this okay. will come with you, with your experience so what right. happened ultimately you know you you are just filling your hard disk you, you mm -hmm. i mean you got 32 gb memory card or 128 doesn't matter you, you'll <laughs> fill it completely and come back right right, right. okay so yeah so after, after that uh, when you come back how do you uh, how do you choose the best ones so suppose you have taken about a 200 pictures uh, in a day how do you what are the factors that help you decide uh, the best ones okay so it it's it's about the sharpness a uniqueness in a sh uh, frame okay and probably some frames you'll get some good habitat so that's how i okay. segregate yeah okay. but again like the uniqueness is the main factor okay okay and uh, what software do you use to process your pictures okay so i use the dpp desktop photo professional which comes okay. default with your camera so that is the best software to convert your raw into tiff. i i usually convert raw into tiff and then process that again in a photoshop just to resize and all that's all okay okay yeah so, so dpp is uh, very powerful okay so that's a canon uh, software that's a canon default software mm -hmm. yeah okay so how much of post processing do you think should be allowed for wildlife photography so there are people who are removing backgrounds and making it blur <laughs> to make it look more visually appealing or uh, uh, so how much okay. uh, in your opinion what is uh, what do you do with this picture see uh, that type of manipulation is not at all recommended i mean that makes no sense so it's better like you know you spend one hour extra in a field and get that kind of frame instead of sitting at home and just you know wasting your time so you are basically photo manipulating so you can probably put anything in that and just create your picture so that makes no sense for me like uh, i usually crop it sometime uh, to get a better frame i crop mm -hmm. it like you know 20 30% i crop it okay. and a little bit color balance sometime to change the mood of mood i mm -hmm. i play with the uh, white balance also 
Okay. So yeah, I usually shoot on auto white, white balance. So okay. and since it is raw, so you can control anything in that you want. Sorry, you you there? Okay. Your voice is cracking. Hello. Hello, Sarab. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Sorry, there were some uh, issues. Okay. Uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. sorry, uh you were saying something. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling something. I think you were asking something. I don't know. Yeah, about so it. about your post processing. So you so use ah, yeah. the camera software. We're talking about how much post processing goes into right, your picture. Right. So it's very minimal post processing. It's it's a minimal, like yeah, I just crop it and all. Or probably sometime if there is uh, some tweak and all, it's just I just remove it. A little bit, not okay. much, like you know, you are just removing completely, not much that much. Okay, okay. Great. Yeah. All right. And uh so what keeps you motivated to click year after year? It's been quite some time you have been taking pictures. There are tons of species you can't count. <laughs> so that inspires me. <laughs> I just find every time I go, I find something unique, something new. Uh, so it's it's like endless. You One life is not enough for this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, do you uh, do you have a checklist that these are the species that I'm going no, to cover, no. or how are you going to do it? How do you? I, uh, I I I want I want to enjoy it. I don't. I'm not running a race. I just want to enjoy it. Okay. So checklist means I mean I don't set my goals like this because okay. you cannot predict. So many things are there. Yeah. You you just right. can't do it. Right. right. Yeah. So a lot of people say that okay, these many species I have done, and uh, I have to do the uh, lot more. So uh, especially when they go to a park, so uh, so that's not uh, your that's not your no, approach. No, 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 not my approach. See, I mean, it, for me, it's so they may be uh, right in the whatever they mm -hmm. want to do in that sense, mm -hmm. but for me, right. my aim is different. Okay, there are right. lots of people they they make their list, you know, five hundred birds, six hundred, eight hundred birds. That's good, right. but I'm not focusing only on birds. I'm focusing on insects. I'm focusing mm -hmm. on reptiles. I'm focusing on so many things. So right. my right. list is huge. Like you know, <laughs> yeah. great, great. Yeah. So uh, what gear do you use, Hemant, currently? Uh, so currently, I have 5D Mark III with 400 mm 5.6 lens. That's okay. All and I have. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, previously, I mean, when you started, what? Uh, how many? Uh, what are the different bodies that you? Oh, uh, so I started with I think for 500 uh, Canon 500D. Okay. So that's very you know way back, uh, almost mm -hmm. seven eight year back. Okay. Then uh, then okay no no not 500D. I started with a bridge camera. Uh huh. 
with a brisk camera i started that i bought from a local market second hand gray <laughs> gray market okay i shot lots of macros with that and uh, again like you know kind of comment i was getting like you know you must be having a huge list of expensive camera and gear such as do this is 15000 rupees camera <laughs> bought it in gray market <laughs> not like that so yeah so i started with that then again uh, I, uh, i use uh, uh, 70d nikon 70d i think 70d yeah. d70 d70 yes d70 that was like again in 2002 somewhere yeah 2002 2003 mm. d70 okay then then i bought a 500d canon 500d mm -hmm. then okay. second hand again a second hand 60d again a second hand okay. 7d <laughs> again a second hand 7d mark 2 and again mm -hmm. a second hand 5d mark 3 yeah that's my camera list great, great. great. okay so uh, so um, uh, what are your future plans with respect to photography i am not sure like sort of see, um, i just want to explore more and more so i mm -hmm. keep going i don't have any set plans no goals and all so i just want to enjoy as, as i told so maybe i'll I'll, ex i'll start experimenting more with the with the lenses with, with with my frames probably to get some kind of uniqueness in it because i uh, okay. yeah yeah i might customize few lenses so I don't know what I'll do with. I, I've opened up so many lenses <laughs> laying down everywhere. Like you know, three four lenses I opened up already. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so uh, Hemant, is there anything that you wish you knew before uh, when you started uh, taking pictures? Um, I think it's it's all going with the flow. I'm I'm fine. Like you know, I'm nothing not, nothing to regret. Like you know, oh, it, it it's good. It's good. Yeah. What is gone is gone, so I don't think about it. Okay, great. great. Yeah. So, so, if somebody wants to be a nature photographer, so what are the top five tip, tips you will give to the person? Okay, uh, so not not a list, but again, like you know, as I told, he should be able to enjoy the nature. Okay. That that's the main that's thing. You should important. be mm -hmm. there, like you know, and probably you can start with the birding. Start bird watching. Make a list. Get generate a little bit interest into it. Then you can take a camera and go for it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things. You know, not only this. Try to educate people about uh, nature, wildlife. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many things and everything we are we are just spoiling now. So it's good to educate people about it, about their surroundings, the nature, so that they can probably contribute later on. Okay, then you can, once you think you are on a track and you can start taking photographs. Yeah, that, that, that's about it. Then I think uh, this is an example, I, your example I give to everybody that uh, first explore your backyard. There's so much where you are yeah, instead yeah. of going to so places like, things. you know. I see my experiences are like all first hand experience when I, I was shooting lots of time at Aminpur and all, and so many areas. So, right. like, there are some lizards are fighting. So, I didn't know what's happening here. So, I realized, you know, that these are basically male Agama, and they are that's a territorial fight. So, that was happening in front of me. It's, it's like first hand experience. Like, I used to see all these things in my, you know, all national geography. Some animals are fighting, the territorial dispute, wow. and so many things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you have everything. If you, if not those reptiles, then you, you have lots of insects. There are lots of spiders. You know, mm -hmm. there are some wasps. They they'll they'll uh, cut down all these legs of spiders and they put them in, in their uh, you know nest or burrow, whatever call it, for fresh meat. You know, mm -hmm. for, for for their uh, young ones. So so many things are happening. And insects, you don't need to go anywhere out. You can mm -hmm. start photography with your mobile. Mobiles are so powerful now. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's how you can probably generate some interest or some understanding about right. nature. Right. right. Then if you think there is a limitation, then go for the next next step. Right. That's a very good advice that you give. It's not right. about like you know, you, if you have money, you just you'll just go and buy 5D Mark IV and you know some mm -hmm. 100, 400 millions and all, and you're doing it. Mm -hmm. 
you will end up selling it and you will probably buy next camera in a couple of months so there are lots of examples people will just see okay they they'll just ask what gear are you using you know your photographs are fantastic if i tell them okay next day i yes i bought these lenses and these things are now what <laughs> i have experienced it a lot seriously so right. it's fine okay good <laughs> <laughs> great okay yeah okay so uh, himant uh, now we'll go through your pictures thank you for answering my question so we will go through your pictures and then uh, if you have some time we'll take some question and answer okay sure sir so yeah, let me share my screen mm-hmm. okay so i'm just put off this okay all right all right so please tell us about uh, this picture that you have taken okay so this was shot at aminpur and okay. uh, uh so um <clears throat> first i thought ki this there something is happening in the in the water like you know this uh, this is marsh area female and she was hovering over there marsh area and brahmani kite so the, both of mm-hmm. them are hovering in in place so then i realized you know he just lifted up this checkered keel back and is is just dropping it again and again so what was happening actually they are behind the fish not the snake okay. so i saw them snatching fish from snake's mouth and just went off so there were two two uh, birds like one this uh, marsh harrier and the brahmani kite they they both were behind the fish like you know fish which is caught by this guy snake so okay. finally they keep lifting and dropping the snake and they took off the fish and just went off oh my god okay. so you must uh, you should have a very keen sense of observation to you know to understand what is going on exactly so that is again very important you know you should know the behavior based on that you can prepare yourself for the next shot so this shot is again in the afternoon okay Okay. okay this is what i was giving example you know you you go any time you'll find something unique that's why only you get this shot because uh, maybe most people <laughs> go in the mornings and evenings so even morning, i have gone there in the morning so that to get some beautiful light <laughs> yeah yeah so but you'll you'll get beautiful light but you will not get the shot and again this was in summer time and you know the hyderabad summer so i was out always out on my bike in summer 42 43 44 degree and afternoon i'm out on for birding so right. okay. with with two three bottle of bottle of water that's all <laughs> great great amazing so it's a lucky shot like, you know, once in a lifetime yeah yeah but you were lucky because you were there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is shot with the 400 mm just it's a 400 mm yeah 400 mm Okay. Wow. Okay. This is again a territory fight between Greyhounds. So it's again like I was shooting something else, and see, you have to be in in invisible mode. You know, you're there, and so many things will start happening around you. Hmm. So how do you so, do that? Sorry to interrupt, uh, Himant. How do you be- become invisible when you are in a situation like this? <laughs> so you have to. I mean, most of my shots, like I usually crawl. Like you know, I don't have car, so on bike I go, I park it somewhere, and from there I start crawling, yeah. crawling, and whatever is there, I'm crawling over it. So, and if I'm shooting, I I try to shoot everything on high level, you know, laying down, mm. laying down on the ground, and try to get the high level shots. Mm. Something I saw, some noise is happening, and these young mm. one, and and probably during breeding period, they the they fight a lot, and they're highly territorials. so mm-hmm. they don't allow other bird in their territory so once is okay. there and they'll start fighting yeah mm-hmm. so i was prepared for it i saw something is going to happen so yeah mm-hmm. i got two three good shots in this frame great beautiful okay so all your shots were with uh, 400 mm lenses it's all with 400 mm yeah i tried in between nikon you know when they launched d500 and uh, 200 500 lens So mm-hmm. I thought, okay, let me switch. I switched also. Then again, I realized two hundred five hundred is very good lens, but it is very slow, very very slow lens. So I didn't enjoy it. Immediately next month, I sold it off. 
so i mean i was i'm not shooting for to get a portrait or for a still shot mm-hmm. right i need more mm-hmm. action in my shots so right, right. 400 is damn sharp in that like you know very quick lens and very good lens mm-hmm. so right. yeah so how much so have this, you uh, cropped these images hemant so uh, so this is almost full frame this is oh, almost wow. full frame oh, because i was very really good are like you know yeah i was close right. so again like you know if you are going to all these local water bodies and in parks and all the the birds mm-hmm. are already familiar with the human presence so you can probably you can literally go a little very close mm-hmm. okay and okay. since you are not disturbing them you are not in their space you are maintain a good safe distance mm-hmm. then and no movement again you have to be in, invisible right you and so a uh, lots of things start is happening so this is a coot family they they pair for lifetime so they are just ma- mating now you can see a chick wow. here so this mm-hmm. is adding not only i'm adding more information in it now you know mm-hmm. right beautiful and you got good light also very nice oh yeah morning shot <laughs> beautiful uh, <laughs> i can see the droplets of water also falling down beautiful ha uh-huh. ha yeah yeah wow okay so not a good lighting but again it's a good uh, record so this is a female uh, is she's making a nest so they usually make nest of foam foam they you make foam nest so it's a malabar gliding frog shot in uh, okay. amboli ghat uh, probably last mm-hmm. year last to last year so over mm-hmm. the water body they usually make their nest so that when the tadpoles are out they just drop down in the water straight away mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah nice wow okay so this is like you know i why i shared this image because people, lots of people said ki you know they are uh, it's a heart shape you know male and female so many things so basically there are two males they are fighting and okay. it's again in aminpur a background you can see there is a building in the background right right uh, yeah mm-hmm. so they they keep eating they keep fighting the, that's how they you know in a group beautiful beautiful yeah so it's a, again a coot so you will see lots of common bird in my photos okay no unique species no <laughs> so But uh, it's made more species of them actually so mm. yeah so it's again uh, uh, they are again highly territorial birds so they'll they'll chase away once the nesting and breeding period starts so whenever they see a, another bird in their territory they'll just come in they'll bite they'll chase they'll just chase him away from their area and again very interesting thing sometime they they pair for life to sometime male force a female to mate so that time they they are very aggressive so all this my information is like my own information it's on my own observation basically it's not okay. like from a text and all i got <laughs> okay great great Wow. Okay, so this is shot uh, near Bangalore. It's a place called Nagavene Halli or something. But it's a mm-hmm. it's a place where you'll find this uh, blue-tailed beater. Lots of them are there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, you can go very close, making a safe distance, mm-hmm. not very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. So what's happening? This is early morning shot. Okay. Uh, so you have to be very careful when you're choosing a background okay mm. subject is mm. important no doubt but right. again right. your background can spoil and make your image right okay right. so i there is a tree in the background and that is under shed okay, okay. so i kept that in a frame deliberately so that i can get a dark background and my subject mm. can pop out oh. yeah so they are again mating they they the male goes and find a feed they will just keeps feeding a female then sometimes they agree and they mate yeah great so how many shots have you taken to get this perfect shot hemant so not so many shots because i know the female is waiting there and this is a okay. breeding time so okay. like you know maybe 10 15 shots i took and i got got this okay. yeah great so the, i told you right i stopped wasting time wasting frames right. basically 
it's no sense right. like you know randomly clicking because i know what is going to going to happen and mm. when so once you right. have this information you will not waste your frame right right great that's a great uh, thing that you said wow this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is very recent shot with the 5D Mark 3 and 400 mm 5.6 wow. so this was shot in a goa so we went for a pelagic so uh -huh. before going there we spent some time in some beach area and this it's a sand plover and she was preening so i find uh -huh. the mm. frame little cute and unique so i processed mm. this one i got many shots like uh, you know this this uh, roosting this is a roosting area so they are mm -hmm. under dunes the sand pits are there so they are sitting inside that mm -hmm. and one female was there and i don't know the gender but yeah so it looks cute to me it's like it reminds mm -hmm. me of piper uh, uh, movie so <laughs> i said fine it, it's looking interesting so i made few frames and the blue in the background early morning early morning mm -hmm. or probably mm -hmm. evening light yeah evening right. Like so, mm, okay. kind of contrast is there in the image. Lots of blue, lots of uh, mm, mm. brown. So that right. is again making the image more interesting. Right, and this is again from a very low angle, probably yeah, from the low angle. Yeah, yeah. So I got lots of scratches on my camera body. So <laughs> it's always <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> and again, uh -huh. I don't use any tripod at all. I have not used any tripod till now. Oh, you don't use that tripod at all. It's a big SL. No, you cannot carry your. No 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 monopod no tripod you cannot carry your camera and so many things and manage at a time okay. yeah <clears throat> wow okay so this one is from my recent trip to bharatpur this is my first trip to bharatpur basically in wow. seven eight years <laughs> so, <laughs> so that too again like i was there in chandigarh for my some alumni meet so i spent I, you know, while returning, I could spend some time in Bharatpur. Mm -hmm. So it's but it's a daughter with the snakehead fish. Mm -hmm. So one thing I realize, you know, whenever they are catching any big fish, they'll try to hide and then they help it. It is not like you know openly there, there and just trying to swallow it, because there are so many other birds. They'll come and they'll snatch it away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so mm -hmm. I know, and this is a big fish, so he's gonna take some time. So I made so many good shots, mm -hmm. you know. Waiting him to come out a little bit and try to swallow it. Mm -hmm. So I made I made good, quite a good shots. Yeah and yeah. And what time of the day was this? Uh, so this was uh, again I think around twelve o'clock, ten o'clock, around ten o'clock. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. This okay. also looks like one for. <laughs> yeah, so I'm lucky. Like you know, uh, I was roaming on a cycle in Bharatpur. You, you can have cycle and just right, just right. roam. So I saw about heard about this, you know, black neck stork. So I mm -hmm. was just I was totally tired. I thought, yeah, let's wait and you know sit some time. Mm -hmm. So I parked my cycle and I just sat there. And in front of me, this scene was happening. <laughs> So it's okay. a pure luck, like you know. Uh -huh. And this he he she's a female. Female has a yellow iris. You can see the mm. eye color is yellow. So she just yeah. slicing a big uh, moorhen. Moorhen is a like kind of a chicken size bird, a little smaller than that. Mm -hmm. For the people who are not from this background, so she was slicing it in pieces, and she's taking away, taking for the chicks actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Great. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of my favorite shots from Bharatpur again. No. It's a bird scape. So mm -hmm. there were one harrier was hovering actually, and they were just shifting place to place. Mm -hmm. so it's a typical landscape of Bharatpur. So mm -hmm. these are the co right. common teals, common teals only. I think yeah, common teals. Mm -hmm. And I like it because of the background, and you have this. Yeah. You have, right. Jewish background, and you have all these uh, birds. So yeah, yeah. this is what I was trying. Yeah, yeah. I give the feel of this place. I was trying to capture the kind of habitat, like you know, the Bharatpur we mm -hmm. So what kind right. of habitat is there? The landscape, you know. Right. So that right. that is what I was trying to capture. So it is. It was like you know, I wanted these birds to come there so that my mm -hmm. frame will get a complete frame. Right. right. 
Wow. Okay, so this is again in a Bharatpur evening, like you know, uh, sunset time. The mm -hmm. background is the reflection of us. Uh, and uh, yeah, so again, uh, there are some branches in the f in, in the foreground also. So I kept that yes. deliberately in front of that so that I can reduce mm -hmm. the intensity mm -hmm. of the main branch. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so it's important how you are focusing your subject. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So but otherwise, but like you know, yeah. Okay, yeah. That is important, like you know, how you're capturing, how you're you know making your frames. It's it's very important because yeah. you have everything there. You mm -hmm. can use it or and uh, yeah, and the framing is there, of course. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Wow. Okay. I remember this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures of I, yours. You know, I like this a lot. So it's mother and child. So it's always good to capture the the eyes of any animal, any mammal. Mm -hmm. So you can it has lots of emotions and a personality basically, you know. Mm -hmm. And deliberately I did not add the face of mother in this because her hand is already there. It's right, kind of right. protect, protecting the so it has lots right. of emotions in Mm -hmm. So you don't need to add a mother face at all because it's absolutely, completely absolutely. The, hand, the hand says it all. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. So very nice. Yeah. And I like the feeling of that uh, baby. The, it looks like uh, very calm and and, and safe. I mean, he's feeling yeah, so that's safe. That's, with that's, yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. So this is again uh, same from same series. Mm -hmm. So I I like the kind of contrast in it. Like you know, mother has full grayish uh, whitish hair, and then the kid is there, and they both have the different expressions and different things mm -hmm. are going on in their mind. The kid is very naughty, and mother is so you know serious <laughs> and alert. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's more alert yeah. because we were close. And this is again mm -hmm. an endangered species. Ah. So they usually, this is shot in Valparai. So okay. on this uh, um, jackfruit season, they come down and just for jackfruits. Okay. And okay. So that's the time you can go and get some shots. Great. Very nice. Wow. Okay. So this is uh, Jeremy's bush frog shot in mm -hmm. Valparai at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean they're they're very very small, so you can hear lots of calls. So they shot in a night. Okay, you can hear the call, but mm -hmm. you cannot spot them. It was mm -hmm. boring that day. Okay. We were just searching. We were you know with the umbrella and all. We were searching torches and all. So we mm -hmm. found this guy, and like around three four different species of frog we found that day. So mm -hmm. yeah, so they are they are just uh, making calls. So. You have to you be there for some time, then they'll get used to of it, and you can just take a shot. So this is again I may uh, with the, the thermocol diffuser I use. You know the thermocol diffuser I was using. <laughs> yeah. So, so 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 yeah, with an external flash, yeah, I, I was really amazed. I mean, um, you see, with with some basic equipment, you, you you have done such a great job. So I, I can see the reflection of it on the. Yeah, the, I did there on this. So I am planning yeah. to avoid this again next time. Probably I'll customize my reflector again mm -hmm. and probably yeah. you know remove all this uh, kind of spot. Beautiful shot. Yeah. Beautiful. So I took from all the angles, you know, left, mm -hmm. right, top, bottom. Mm -hmm. so, so once you have near your species, uh, your subject, and and mm -hmm. both are comfortable, try to take as much as shot as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is what will be your opinion about uh, cloning that part out in Photoshop? No, nah, no. Nah. Why will I do it? I can get no, the no. original one. No, no, no. no point. Okay. I, I would have done it otherwise. See, I'm using Photoshop from last 15, 20 years, so I can do anything in Photoshop. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can even paint this frog as it is in Photoshop if I want any. Species. That's a very good answer. That's a see. That's a that's a really great answer that you gave. So you will go there back again, and then you will get I that. Will shot. Do I did yeah. probably better than this. Who knows? Mm. That will give me yeah. kind of motivation, right? You know, something is missing. Right, I right. have to fill in next next trip. Absolutely. I do the. I think the same for landscapes. Yeah, landscape is. 
it's, it's again totally different right. uh, genre. <laughs> Great. Wow. So very nice okay. uh, environmental uh, portrait yeah. of the uh, thing. So oh, it's, uh, it's, this is shot in uh, Kurg. So I wanted this snail always, like, you know, it's endemic to that area. So this mm -hmm. is shot with uh, Lava 15 mm macro lens. It's okay. very difficult, yeah. very difficult lens. Not that easy. Like, you know, you go and buy it and, and done. It's not mm -hmm. that easy. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a difficult lens, but, but the kind of result you'll get, it's, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So how close yeah. were you, uh, you to this snail when you're taking this? I think uh, one inch away. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, very close. That's what I'm telling you. It's not that easy. Like now people are using macro lenses for any kind of wildlife. Hmm. Macro lenses, close up, wide angle lenses, so many things, so many experiments are happening now. Mm, great. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And did you use any external light for this or this is natural light? I don't remember, but I think I I have used some light source. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can see you, you have used a flash here, some kind of flash you have used here. Uh, then I must have used it, yeah. In the exit. Uh, yeah. Because for macro, you, you you have to have used flash because you're shooting on right. a higher aperture and, right, right, and right, right. very low lighting. So mm -hmm. it's, it's right. good to have a flash, some fill light. Right. So that's a manual lens, is it? Yeah, it's a manual lens, completely manual oh. lens. Oh. Wow, beautiful. Okay, this is again with the same lens, mm -hmm. lava. And yes, mm -hmm. I use flash in this, you can see. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so it's again a habitat and uh, kind of behavioral uh, shot. You can mm -hmm. see it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a tiger moth laying the eggs and all. Typical mm -hmm. place where the, most of the insects, they lay eggs. It's under the leaf, basically. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I just, yeah. So where was this shot? It's a near local lake somewhere. Like I usually go something. Okay. It's within the city, like, you know. So in, in lakes and all you go, you'll, you'll find lots of, lots of spiders, lots of insects. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, just, just keep lifting leaves and all, you'll find so many things there. Okay. So do you feel Hyderabad is better for uh, birding or uh, Bangalore? I feel Hyderabad is better. <laughs> I'm missing Hyderabad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So kind of photography in Bangalore, like you know, uh, I don't know. I I don't find uh, lakes like Aminpur and uh, Osman Sagar here in Bangalore. Or if we have, but they are very far from from the city. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's uh, yeah. so it's a rubber fly juicing on weevil. So this is uh. With 1855 reverse lens. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I find, kind of huh. uh, yeah, the same you? thermal light, hmm. the okay. external light. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So I find yeah. like uh, macro and all, uh, your reverse is fantastic. It's amazing kit hmm. lens you are having. Like, you know, it's a free hmm. macro lens with your camera body, 1855. Right. Don't underestimate it. It's very powerful, very powerful lens. So this is with that. Great, great. But yeah, extremely difficult to use. Uh, it's difficult to uh, handle, yeah. So look at the details you have got here. Just amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even I amazing. enjoyed it a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, again in uh, Amboli Ghat mm -hmm. with it with fifteen mm lava lens, fifteen mm macro lens. Okay. So yeah, so what like about I like about it the the snail is just entering in the frame. It's creating a kind of story, and mm -hmm. and they're mating here like if a male and the female are there on the leaf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Let's see. Yeah. What about this one? Okay, so these are the Amboli bush frog eggs. So this is again with the 15 mm uh, macro lens. You can see the mm -hmm. tadpole inside. And it's a pretty yeah. common shot. Whoever goes in Amboli, they'll usually get this these kind of shots. Okay. 
But again, probably the kind of framing I did that is making it a bit unique. I use mm -hmm. uh, flash from the backside so that mm -hmm. I can that kind of sign. Yeah. So, yeah, and again, I was trying to capture the habitat where they usually lay eggs and all it's on the tree around five to six feet above the ground level. Yeah. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> You are okay, so, talk about shop now. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of my favorite shots. Basically, I yeah. uh, I saw one of short from one one of my friend, like you know, is from um, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting his name. So he shot. He shared some for, for some photograph with the pup. So that was not this close, like you know, some far away shot um, mm -hmm. flying. That. From that day, I wanted a shot, bat shot with a pup. So luckily, uh, so this is shot at uh, Narsapur forest. Narsapur, okay. we have a we have a, um, mm -hmm. um, a, a lake over there. So in that lake, there are lots of in one tree, there are lots of lots of bats over there. So mm -hmm. afternoon, they was just started flying off. You know, we again like you know in afternoon, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, I was there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they were just started flying then i realized you know, they were actually drinking waters so they they'll go over the water body they sweep down they make the belly wet and they lick it mm -hmm. like this so that's how they drink the water so then okay. again i realized you know when i saw them you see what is happening here so they were actually mm -hmm. drinking water so similarly like you know uh the bats were going off from the tree and they're coming back after some time so so I got lots of bat shots in that day, and again, luckily I got mm -hmm. this also. I really I saw something is is there in the is bat. So I took some shots, and this is almost a full frame shot. Wow! Yeah, so about that close. So I got this shot and few shots where they are actually going through water and splashes around. Mm -hmm. So I made few good shots. So I this got uh, this was on top Twitter some time back. And that day I was getting followers like every second, two, three followers. It was like rainy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, this is short. This is shared in lots of platforms in lots of places. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. are with credit, some are without credit. And I really left it like you know, I just can't do anything about it now. Mm. Yeah. Right. And this is almost on all the top hubs on Instagram. Almost everybody has shared it. Yeah, with three to four so million followers, <laughs> right? It is so amazing. You can see the eyes, the details of the eyes, the mouth, and the baby clinging to it. It's so amazing to see this. Yeah. So this wow. is the first time I saw something like this. The bat, okay, but yeah, the the baby is was like wow. So I was so happy after receiving that. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. So this is again a common kingfisher, very friendly bird. So in kingfisher, uh, the females not in a kingfisher in 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 birds basically the female are more cooperative than the male, because I think female has to lay eggs and all, and they are more. Uh, you you approach them and they they will not fly off like you know they'll take okay. some time. Okay. But male are very shy; they will immediately fly off. Okay, okay, they will not okay. you know, from hundred meter they will fly off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is a male. The so female has a lower mandible, orangeish color. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky mm -hmm. to spot it. So then again, like you know, the background is making it actually. Mm -hmm. There was some building Very in the nice. background. So I compose mm -hmm. my frame so that I can have some color information behind the bird. Otherwise, it wow. would look very flat. So that right. makes again right. a common shots. So wow. it is making it more colorful. Uh, lots of uh, complementary colors. Absolutely. You have yellow. Absolutely. You have blue. You have orange in this. So True. that is making Absolutely. it more fresh and more catchy. Absolutely. And the the pose again. It's not a normal pose. He was just sitting and preening. So after some time, they'll mm. whenever they fed properly, they had food and all. They they'll sit some place and just start preening themselves, cleaning mm. and all mm. something. Yeah. So that time I took this. And uh, lots of birds have, uh, they they come, they have their own favorite spots. Yeah, they, I was just about to say that. So there is, uh, I mean, just outside yeah. our house, there's one place. 
every day the kingfisher would sit there so every yeah day. so there are they, they have their own favorite spots they'll fly they'll they'll come and hunt and they'll you know, they'll catch fish and they'll sit on the same place and they'll just eat it they'll kill and eat properly so yeah so yeah so the best thing is going in a in a regular spots spend more time start observing right. find out the spots where they sit and right. you know be there let them get used to a few presence and then take a shot and kingfish are amazing you can spend full day there with them i i just keep clicking i love clicking king fisher <laughs> very nice beautiful yeah wow okay so this is a, a, again a, a very common bird the brahmini brahmini kite mm -hmm. so what i like you know uh, there is a dam behind it and that is again under shadow the light is coming from the mm -hmm. back right. it's cross cross lit light is coming from the back so they were just mm -hmm. they they eat on waste basically someone throws mm -hmm. some chicken waste every sunday they throw some chicken waste so these all the birds will come there and they start taking and eating mm -hmm. okay so i like i saw i mean i was standing actually the other side of it when i saw mm -hmm. the frame then i realized you know lighting is this direction the so probably i should go there and try this shot and i underexpose this few steps so that i can get mm. these droplets white because the light was right. coming again from the back side right. so right. it was right. it was like uh, like shining like anything mm. and bird is Beautiful. white so you can just play with your contrast level right. dark can right. white can get this mm. beautiful absolutely beautiful wow okay so <laughs> this is again in aminpur very close shot not very and uh, very less cropped again so mm -hmm. in again in kingfisher also they they'll go and find a fish and then the feed a female so this keep on going for some time then they go for mate mm -hmm. okay so i was lucky to have them in a proper place a pro good lighting uh, I, of mm -hmm. course to freeze any action you have to have a higher surface speed mm -hmm. so i was like mm -hmm. you know i shot this i was with ikbal that day so we both were there and mm -hmm. we were just super excited mm -hmm. wow <laughs> so we were actually shooting the female there so she was sitting there and suddenly the male came and then mm -hmm. this happened so i wow. still don't i mean what i i mean i was sitting there so I, I mean i could have moved little bit but, but again the movement was very short so i could have avoided the background there is a white patch right right Mm. again i i mean i realize you know if i move some do something they may disturb and i will i will miss this also so said fine right, right. it mm. there i'm happy with the moment yeah very nice beautiful it's very i mean it's it's rare shot it's not that common <laughs> right i've never seen uh, pictures like this i mean all your, all your shot for that matter they are also so different yeah Seven. Yeah. What about this one? Okay. So again, this is in Aminpur. Most of my shots are from Hyderabad, Aminpur. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> I saw these guys hunting, and they usually go under water, take out the fish, and just they toss it to, and then they help it. So I saw this guy is there hunting. I started crawling. I approach. I reach very close, and then he tried two, three times more. and in one of them i just got the shot so what wow. happened is this fish actually escaped oh is it okay <laughs> he's twisting a body completely and he just kind of spring reaction or something and he just just mm. twisted and just escaped from there so okay wow. so it's good shot because of the eye level and the early morning light mm -hmm. so many mm. things are there in one shot oh this is again at uh, 400 mm ah uh -huh. yeah 400 mi mm So a lot of people think 400 mm is uh, not adequate they go for a 600 and then they use uh, so, other things like pc so i mean and you that you, is, you are... yeah that is what i think lots of people are confused they are not actually no they don't know their gear and they are not probably using it so they just get carried away like you know if they there are lots of good big biggies you know big photographers they use 800 mm 600 mm with tc so many things so i feel 
that is where they are confused see they those those people have crossed a certain level right you know they are on a next step now and so you should probably do your homework first and then go for uh, next step <laughs> so i always give example of you that you know uh, here it does not really matter if you want to i mean do little bit i life i mean uh, understanding nature and and shooting with what you have first is something very very oh yes yes critical. you 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 should shoot whatever you have with that that's the best thing mm -hmm. okay if you sitting and waiting you know i should have like you know 600 mm or 800 mm with this mm -hmm. and that so that will you you can never do anything mm -hmm. okay there you are creating a barricade yourself So mm. there is no point. You just can't do anything. I I took I bought my first camera with a loan. I took a loan. Okay, fine. <laughs> I said I am wasting my time. I should start it. I I cannot collect this much of money, you know, in this time. So let's yeah. not waste time. Took a loan. I took a loan. I started shooting it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's you. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Palni Palni took the shot. so yeah okay okay yeah i don't have any shot with the with the camera and all so i someone mm -hmm. wanted for a magazine basically so i said please okay take okay. some shots oh, with the camera why... <laughs> so this is this is all i have like you know my camera and everything my lens mm -hmm. my camera that's all and this right. small cameras uh, small lenses are very handy okay mm -hmm. so you can just move in any direction you can get any action shots right right otherwise right. you'll keep struggling with big lenses holding mm -hmm. moving so it's it's right. difficult with that small lenses are amazing to shoot any action anything in the wild yeah. great great yeah this is your uh, i think most yeah. famous picture of the yes sir years <laughs> this oh, made yes, uh, yes. amin pool very famous <laughs> oh yes correct <laughs> so this is again uh, it's a checkered keel back early morning shot so mm -hmm. uh i mean this this i saw i think second or third time this snake is doing the same thing so they usually catch fish from the back side they'll come on the ground if they drop it then from the head side they'll start gulping to start swimming so i know this key he caught the fish now he's going to come somewhere on the ground and he's going to mm. drop it and gulp it so i knew i approached him again in the same way and uh, crawling on the ground approaching Mm. and he was doing mm. all this i like mm. this frame i can see the both the eyes and there is a drop is under the fish you can see it's mm. there right. so yeah that what amazing. is making it more interesting oh, and kind of the behavior water is water captured water yeah. Eyes, yeah yeah beautiful From last Just drop amazing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> beautiful i think uh, this picture is has given you an identity i think in those days i mean i in fact for the first time i saw i was really wondering is this really hyderabad i know maybe <laughs> some other place <laughs> yeah that is what people don't explore their local areas yeah, so many things we right. have and yeah beautiful wow yeah this is what i was telling so these are the rock agama there are two males and it's a territory fight so mm -hmm. i was very close and they were not even scared of me like you know they were just trying to kill each other There was wow. that involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is also in Aminpur, is it? It's in Aminpur, yes. Wow. So they were actually uh, agamas are like you know red and black in color. So I saw in front of me they were red and black, and now they have become this color. So they keep changing colors, you know. Wow. Yeah. So it's again uh, eye level shots. So that is making it more right. huge, huge in size. So it's kind of right. uh, yeah. Okay, so this again in Aminpur, way back in 2000. When I don't even remember. Early stage shots, basically. So it's again a, a male. He got a fish for the female. So he'll start mm -hmm. feeding a fe uh, feeding now this female, and they'll go for mating. So it's very interesting. First I saw, I I was confused. You know, that this doesn't look like a chick. It's a uh, it's a fully grown adult. So why why is feeding a fish to him? then i realized mm. that i did some study then realized okay there's something called breeding ritual so we have professor mm -hmm. jagan jagan sir he told mm -hmm. me okay mm -hmm. 
then I realized, okay, that something is common in lots of places and lots of species. So you have to bribe. <laughs> yeah, so it's a breeding ritual. And this is like in, in, in lots of species. We are going to have Dr. Jagan soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. He's a wonderful, yeah, <laughs> wonderful human. Very, very, very nice helpful. Person. Very nice person, very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is the day I bought a uh, uh, 70, yeah, 70 camera from one of my friend, I forget his name. Mm. Okay, that day I just went to experiment with the with the speed of the bus mode of 70. Mm. So that day I mm. got this shot. So they usually these are the river turns. They'll die, okay. die and just take take the fish out. So you can see the fish eye is popping out. So this was yeah, actually yeah. A, a full frame uh, shot. Full frame means the full bird shot actually. Wow. So I just cropped it in such a way so that mm. I can this can create more impact in a frame. Wow! Amazing. Beautiful. So how much time uh, did you spend for this shot? So they were just hunting in front of me. So I made okay. so many shots, like, you know, uh, 50, 60, 100 shots probably. Out of that, okay. I got around 8 to 10 good shots. In 8 wow. to 10, this is the best shot, which I mm -hmm. cropped it to frame it in a proper way. OK. So that was the last picture we had. Uh, so it was such a delight to see your pictures. So thank you so much, Heman. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank uh, you so much. So, so guys, if you have any question, you can shoot now. So uh, I am just going to read the comments if you have any pictures. And uh, then we will. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this screen. All right. I'm just going to read through and uh, see if there is any comment. So maybe just quickly, I'm going to read a few of the comments. Heman, sir, I love your photography. <laughs> such a great human, of course. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> he helped me my, uh, in my show. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Nikhil. Thank you, Nikhil. OK, and uh, okay, so uh, Krishna is asking, what is your favorite shot till date? <laughs> it was my colleague in my last company, uh, in my company. Okay. Last company. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I enjoy every shot. It is not like uh, probably some uniqueness in a shot that makes it more my more favorite, like, you know, the Kingfisher mating mm -hmm. or the bird, which is just uh, the food chain mm -hmm. series and, uh, and some unique shots that makes it mm -hmm. my favorite. But again, I enjoy all anything I'm posting means that is my favorite. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, Bhagya Lakshmi is asking, how are you pursuing your passion in this lockdown? I'm I'm doing birding continuously. I'm drawing now. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm I draw. I'm drawing daily one bird. So I'm an artist too. Mm -hmm. So I I'm just yeah. doing it, and it's I'm enjoying right. the lockdown. For artists, it's it's right. it's a good time actually to explore many things, and lots of right. people are learning new things. So I'm also mm. just trying to explore my different areas and exploring it more. Right, right. So I was seeing in your other profile, you have drawn so many of these uh, birds, your favorite yes, birds. Yes. From last 32 days, I'm, daily, I'm, I'm making one bird daily before I sleep. So that's wow. kind of uh, routine I've made. So no matter what time I'm mm. sleeping, sometime I'm night, like, you know, before going to bed night, one o'clock or two o'clock also I'm drawing. You no, know, I have to finish this bird today. So that I can start next one tomorrow. So, <laughs> great, great. Yeah, because people keep saying, you know, you know, they don't have time. So I said, mm. everyone has time. It is not up. It's it's up to you how you are managing and you know absolutely. prioritizing absolutely. your stuff. True, true, yeah. absolutely. Okay, Anita is saying good vibes. Priyanka is saying and very nice. Enjoy your work. Thank you. And uh, and then. Rajmanna is say, saying hi, Heman. Oh, okay. Is saying, what, what is it? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's coordination of your uh, your experience yeah. with your eyes and hand, basically. Right. Right. 
So Krishna is saying you must have spent a lot of time observing the birds. Yeah, absolutely, I can. Oh, yes. I've just, seen him from morning till evening. Till the time there is light, he would be out. You know, you won't believe. Like you know, when I got seventy mark two, I was so happy that I can spend at least one hour extra in the field because the ISO performance is better than my older camera. <laughs> Wow. So I could spend one hour early morning extra and one hour in the evening. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Deepu is saying this is amazing. Bara Dutta is saying, okay, okay, to good. Okay. So I'll just quickly uh, see if there are any questions. There are a lot more appreciations that you have got. Okay, so Bharat yeah, Sir is asking: is, Isn't there a risk of damaging the contacts when the lens reversal ring is used? It is not that. Uh, if you know how to use it, then it is not a problem. But again, like you know, right. you can always have a, a kind of tap up ring or some some kind of adapter is there. You can use it over it. Yeah. But I, I did not use it in initial stages. It's, so I was a, ready to take some risk. So that is like on, on me because I am doing it. So maybe I can get. Some kind of damage, but I was prepared for it. Yeah. So anything is happening, I'm I'm ready for it. Yeah. yeah. But if you are using it carefully, nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how much focal length? So you see, most of Heman's shot I I saw were at 400 millimeter. Yes, mine are with 400 that, millimeters. That with was on a full crop body. body or a crop body. Cro okay. I started with the crop, then uh, now I got a full frame. So full okay. uh, 400 with full frame is little less. So I'm mm -hmm. probably I'll probably get one more body, any body like 1200D will also do just to extend it mm -hmm. a little more focal length. Yeah. Okay. Krishna is saying Batman. <laughs> 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 okay. So after seeing the beautiful innocent world of wildlife, how do you see the human world? Human. Uh, humans are very unpredictable. So. <laughs> <laughs> Humans are parasites, actually. So mm -hmm. they they think they are above nature and they're destroying everything. Corona, you've seen now, and you all are sitting in home, tying a mask on your face. So yeah. we all know the reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Rajamannar sir is saying you left Aminpur. I am I mean, still there. My Aminpur. brain is there. <laughs> Aminpur, <laughs> Usman Sagar. I, I just love those places. Mm -hmm. So much of thing we we did there. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, Shiari Sir is saying kudos to your uh, patience and uh, de for details to get a picture at the exact time. Great work, great patience, and great results. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, these these kind of words give you more encouragement to you know go beyond your limit and just you know do more mm -hmm. and explore more and. Right. Right. Okay. So you, Heman means humble. You make your equipment your slave, like nobody does. Absolutely, you have made the this best. This is how you should do it. Yeah, Absolutely. it's it's just a tool basically, and you should know how to use it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I remember you were shooting at noon when I went home, and as I could could not stand the heat of the sun. Yeah, I re I remember. I was so I was like. There. Bi colored a month, like you know, <laughs> I had two different shades on my body. <laughs> okay, Vishal is saying good work, a month. Oh, my, okay. my call okay. classmates. Oh, wow. Okay, so here we have a question from uh, Naveen. So, if you find a bird animal in good light, uh, you will spend uh, some time capturing its actions or mood instead of just chasing after uh, more exciting subjects. So it, it depends, like, you know, if I see any possibility of any action is happening there, then I, I will probably spend more time on that with that particular species. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I find anything in any area where I could probably get something better than this shot, I'll probably go there. Okay. Uh, Satya Prasad sir is saying amazing images, Himant. Hats off to your de dedication. And uh, Ritesh is saying. Uh, Blessed to learn from you, Heman Bhai. He is very good going. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Gurmi is saying, Heman, missing the uh, bird trips from and learning from you. We'll come again. We'll we'll go together. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so close. Okay, all your pictures uh, pictures are awesome, Anna. Uh, Sandeep is saying this. Thank you, Sandeep. Chandu, Chandu is saying. Uh, you are having a unique style in wildlife photography. Yeah, of course, I, I believe this. Yeah. 
thank you chandu so uh, when did you decide to pursue uh, your future in this field we shall I mean, i think i when i left my painting stuff and all and i joined it company i was into gaming and all then mm-hmm. something was lacking then i decided ki i should start birding again now mm-hmm. so almost mm-hmm. 7 8 year back i started full fledged birding properly in into wildlife yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay all right so pragya is saying yours a very unique and distinct style of photography every picture has uh, some action it was like a movie going on wow it's 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 amazing to be there like you know having all this first hand experience mm-hmm. i want everyone to start birding at least start bird watching everyone mm-hmm. you you'll know what right. you're missing okay so the, the next question i also have this question himant we uh, we also want a exhibition of your pictures in hyderabad yeah i just had my exhibition in bangalore so i'm yeah, planning to yeah. take the same show there in uh, in uh, hyderabad but That with the free of my artwork so it will be like combined of my artwork and my photography mm-hmm. this time Great. so that yeah. is uh, when have you planned it i i will take some time to film for i mean complete my work so mostly december or january yeah okay mm-hmm. okay great great so great it was uh, great catching up with you hemant and uh, we have for long i mean it, it's good to meet like this especially in the lockdown time it's so good to meet friends yeah, and uh, and go for your pictures I, i think uh, we can't spend lockdown in a better way than this this is the best thing i think and thanks to you for arranging all this so yeah <laughs> you're doing fantastic in this great so okay we have one more question we'll take this and then we'll uh, we were shooting in a specific species are uh, going to study that species so do you study the species See, human uh no it is it is not possible be, because you don't know what you're going to get in a field so most of the birds they have the same kind of behavior you should know like you know your safe distance you should not go and disturb that bird so those things are important and mm-hmm. just just have some more patience and just wait for a mm-hmm. right moment and then get your shot okay but again definitely so, i try to come mm-hmm. back home and i try to study if i find something unique like you know there are broken wing uh, behavior when when the male when you are nearby any nesting bird nest there are lots of bird they make nest on the ground so the mm-hmm. male and the female they they usually go and just pretend as the the wings are broken or they got mm-hmm. injured so that predator can go away from the the nest so they keep keep doing this and they will take you from away from the nest so so many things okay. you are learning when you are in the field yeah right right great i think the experience is the best teacher uh, when you're out there in the field for so long i think um, that's how you probably have learned uh, more exactly exactly okay. so many things you you that is what like you know you keep pulling you there like you know you you can't so weekend night only i'll just go out fine i have to go there i'll just start because i know something exciting is there mm-hmm. so great great so thank you so much hemant i am uh, really grateful to you for spending time with us and i am sure uh, the viewers have learned so much from you and uh, yeah uh, so thank you once again and uh, yeah if you have some last words to say to uh, some piece of advice you want to give to people so we'll only, uh, take it. only thing i would say uh, don't be in a rush or in, in any race try to protect nature do something for the conservation and yeah because this is vanishing and we all know about it do something about it get your kids involved into into birding or anything in nature related activity so that they can contribute when they are on the position because they are the future so mm-hmm. yeah great so uh, guys if you want to follow hemant uh, i have already left his uh, instagram and facebook coordinates and uh, and you can follow him and get inspired from his work and uh, we are going to have a lot of interviews like this in future and uh, and it's because of you viewers we are i'm able to do this thing and it's a great uh, stress buster for me during the lockdown because uh, i have never stayed at home for so long never <laughs> ever yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah so so thank you so much and please subscribe for our channel because we'll have a lot more uh, events like this happening and uh, thank you hemant thank you once again thank and you, thank goodbye you so much. thank you so goodbye. much goodbye stay goodbye. safe goodbye